Amen. Awesome. Too much Mountain Dew for me. Actually, not enough. Not enough. <laughs> Just kidding. So, uh, this week we're going to... Uh, one of the things that we wanted to do, uh, something that ministered to Maribel earlier today, uh, she read uh, Romans chapter 12, and it was a really, really uh, ministering chapter. Pretty so, much the whole thing, but we're not going to do the whole thing in one day, obviously. Right, so there's 21, I believe, <coughs> uh, verses in Romans, but we only got five days that were with you guys, so... What we are going to do is we're going to be hopping a little bit um, through the chapter. Uh, so we're only doing one verse a day, so we're going to hop through this week in Romans 12. So we encourage you guys uh, to go ahead on you guys' free time to read the whole chapter uh, just to get um, the full context of everything. And So obviously you can study and show yourselves approved. Uh, so yeah, so today... We are uh, starting with the foundation. We're starting with Romans 12.1. Uh, this is a, a different translation that we're going to read. <laughs> so, Mirabel, did you want to read it? Yeah. Me read? Okay, so Romans 12, verse 1. And we're doing the ERV, which is easy to read version. And it says, So I beg you, brothers and sisters, because of the great mercy God has shown us, Offer your lives as a living sacrifice to him, an offering that is only for God and pleasing to him. Consider what he has done. It is only right that you would, you should worship him in this way. And um, so when I was reading today, um, I had um, I had been I, I was reading in first uh second corinthians and then i had go, gone to romans 12 and i read the whole chapter and it just started ministering ministering to me because i was i was sitting there and thinking about everything that god has done for me i'm sorry i'm gonna apologize guys if you guys hear weird noises and if i have to leave i have i do my father's dialysis at home so i have i have him on treatment right now so if you hear noises and if i have to leave that's what it is um, so when I was sitting there today, I was just thinking about j just everything that he's done for me in my life specifically. And I was just thinking about how small I am and how microscopic I seem when, when I look at how big and how detailed God has created everything around me, how, how the birds outside and just... The, the, the earth, how it is, the moon, the sun, just everything. I was just thinking about everything. And then I was thinking about how small I am in all of that. And then I was thinking about how even how small I am, God knows me. He knows my name. He created me. He loves me. And he continues to pursue me. And as I was reading this chapter, I was just thinking about it. It says... Uh, especially the end, it says, considering what he has done, it is only right that you should worship him in this way. What has God done for us? Everything. If you have salvation, he, if you have received salvation, because he died for all of us, he died for all of our sins. And it's a free gift if we choose to accept it. So if you call yourself a Christian, if you call yourself somebody who has received, you know, inherited eternal life, then you have he, everything that he's done for you. You think about where you were before him and the way you lived your life and just how unfulfilling life was before him and how it didn't have purpose and you didn't have true and genuine joy and that's this is me speaking from what I felt before him and thinking about everything that he's done for me someone who's so small and so just uh, not even a fraction of his bigger picture and his plan so when I think of that and I'm like yeah it is only right that I worship God in a way that it presents myself as a living sacrifice. He sacrificed, he, he paid the ultimate sacrifice for us to have eternal life. And it's only right is that this short time that I'm here on this earth, that I live my life as, as, as an offering.
offering to him. That I, I live my life unto God and I worship him with my life. And so I was reading that and that's just this portion and we'll go into the rest of Romans 12. But I, that was just like my mindset when I was reading that. I was just like, wow, I'm so small and I'm so just, you know, you think of a, a particle of dust and you think about how God created even, even that. He created everything and everything that he's done for me in my life. Why, like how, what else can I do but not live and give it all to him and for him and try to, try to honor him with the way I live my life. Yeah, and, uh, you know, with everything that God has done for us, with everything that he continues to do for us, um, why not, why wouldn't we want to give him our best? You know, why wouldn't we want to worship him when he wakes us up every morning, when he's blessed us with food on the table, when uh, he's blessed us with our health, uh, when he's blessed us with family, when he's blessed us with friends, when he's blessed uh, our pa your parents with, with jobs or, or whatever. You know, why not worship God? Why not give him our best by how we treat others, by what we look at, by what we say? Why not? You know, it's really humbling because, you know, even, <coughs> excuse me, even today, you know, for me, um, that's humbling for me because there are times where, yes, even I and Maribel, we're not, well, I'll just speak for myself, that I'm not giving my all sometimes. And, you know, I repent of that in Jesus' name. Because with what Maribel was saying is God literally gave himself for us. Think about that. Would you guys die for the world? Knowing that the world despised him or despised you, would you, would you guys actually make that sacrifice? It's a deep question. And ponder that. Jesus did without hesitation. He, he didn't hesitate. Yes, he was going he, when he was in the in the in the field with some of his disciples. He was praying to God and saying, "Lord, if there's another way, take this cup from me." But nonetheless, Your will be done and not mine. He didn't hesitate to go on that cross. He did it for us. So you know, I think about that. I'm humbled. Why not want to give him my best? Why not? That's 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 really humbling. Yeah, like you think about some, think about someone who you really love. Like, okay, so for you guys, it might be your parents, your siblings, um, somebody that you love and that some sometimes might get on your nerves, but you love them so much you'd do anything for them. Um, so, and then let, I think of KK. So, okay, I love him so much. And you think about what you d would do for that person. And maybe you would die for that person. But now think about the person, think about people who are possibly your enemies or who do dislike you or who have persecuted you or who have done things to you. And in the human flesh, how difficult is it to be like, I wouldn't die for that person? Like, when you think about that, like, um, I while we were yet his enemies, while we were yet even those who put him there, he died for them. He died for them. The ones who were nailing him to the cross, the ones who were persecuting him, the ones who were whipping him and doing all of that. Like, he died for all of their sins, past, present, and future. He was thinking of us long Thousands of years ago, he was thinking of us and all the things that we would do. And even on those times when we rebel and we reject and we, um, and when we dishonor God, he died for us to have eternal life. And you would, you want how much more, like when you think about the good things that you want for a person. Like, I love KK. Do you think I would want to give him trash and give him, like, like, let's say I'm cooking him dinner. Do you think I would go and pull something out of the garbage and feed it to him? I wouldn't want to do that because I love and care for him. 
think of that, but times the biggest number you can think about. The Lord loves us so much that he wants, he wants, he loves us so much. And you think about that love is so, so grand. You're like, yes, I, I want, I want to give to you, Lord. I, what can I do for you? Like, I'm, I'm so small, but what can I do for you? Oh, I can live my life for you. And not only that, but it's, it's at the same time, I'm living my life for you. What can I do for you, Lord? But it's also, Lord, what don't you like? Because what the things that you don't like, I, I don't want to do that. Because I don't want to dishonor you. I want to honor you with every single little thing that I do. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what we're, the essential thing we're going to be talking about this week is, is how to live life in Christ. For him. For him. And to bring him glory and honor. Yeah, and... You know, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and set this groundwork for you guys today is that um, I know I, I thought about this when I was a younger Christian and I hear it so much from, you know, just people in the world is God ask too much. I can't live my life. I can't have no fun. That's not true. It's not <laughs> true in the slightest. Like God, it, it says in the word. That God's ways are not burdensome, mm-hmm. which means God's ways are not hard. Mm-hmm. And we'll be able to get into more detail. We'll later. be able to get yeah. into detail with that, you know, this week. Yes. But re- also remember that God's ways are not burdensome. Yeah. They're not hard. So when you think of that, you want to just please him as much as you can. As much as you, you can because you want to do that. It's not out of obligation. You want to do it. And so we just wanted to lay this groundwork for you guys today. So the rest of the week when we get into some scriptures, four more, that we will lay for you guys how to live life in Christ. Yep. So before we leave, does anybody have any prayer requests or anything that they wanted to share? If you do, you have a little bit of time. <laughs> Put it right there. <laughs> How long should we wait? How long do you think it takes to type something up? Uh, you know, when you put the X factor with the time it takes to type on a keyboard on a phone, and then you right. put the Y plus the I X and the square root equals like 20 All right, seconds. You're, you're, you're doing too much right now. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we love you guys. We hope to see you tomorrow, God willing. We hope you have a good rest of your night. And I'll pray so. Yeah. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this day. And we just pray for protection over every single person watching this, Lord. And we pray that everybody watching this, Lord, that you would have touched them. In, in a place, Father God, where they needed to to be talked to, Father God. And we just pray that you would minister to them continually. And in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Oh, wait. wait, wait, wait. Corey. So, here, you read it. Cause All right. This is from Corey. He says, and I quote, He loves us so much that he laid down his life for us, past, present, and future, and gave us free will, just like KK said. <laughs> just like KK said, it's not an obligation, but a want to praise him and thank him. Yep. Amen. It's Amen. a desire because you love him and because you're thankful. Yeah. And, and we'll be getting into a lot more of that stuff this week, so love to see you guys back here tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Love you guys. Bye, guys.